meteorology and polar exploration have gone hand in hand um, right since the beginning. Even when Scott made his fateful journey to the South Pole, a lot of what they um, were studying was meteorology. They took many observations during their trip and the records are held in the Met Office Library to this day. The British Antarctic Survey is an uh, institute of the Natural Environment Research Council and they specialise in um, polar research both in the Antarctic and in the Arctic. The Met Office sends a forecaster down to Antarctica every year. Um, we're there for about the five or six months of their summer programme. My role was working um, as a forecaster based mainly at the Rothera Research Base, um, which is on the Antarctic Peninsula. Antarctica is the highest, driest, windiest, coldest continent in the planet, so that makes forecasting the weather quite, quite difficult. It's also the lack of infrastructure that's there that makes it quite difficult. So um, compared to in the UK where we have um, civilised airports and we have runways and um, we have instrument landing systems, we also have weather radars and um, regular satellite images. Down in Antarctica we don't have any of that. Um, the planes are landing on just ice. The surfaces aren't runways, they're, they could be crevassed, they're covered in snow. Every day um, the Met Office would send me their most up-to-date global forecast, which I would then um, use on a um, workstation to figure out what the best forecast will be. The winds coming from um, across the mountains in the east um, would create some very treacherous um, weather conditions for the aircraft along the runway, with quite different conditions at one end of the runway to the other. Another thing would obviously be if a big snowstorm would um, come through, it would affect the visibility and to land at the runway there, the pilots needed to have good visual sight of the runway. And if they didn't have that and an unexpected snowstorm came, then there's nowhere to divert to. So they would literally have to just circle until the weather cleared. And sometimes that would um, be quite a pressurised situation when you've got a plane circling in the sky and that everybody's looking at you for an answer of when the weather's going to clear. It was really nice to be somewhere where the weather had such an impact on, um, on the whole base and um, everybody down at Bass is just really trying to get the absolute most out of the summer season to do as much science as possible and the role of the forecaster is really key to that so it was, it was great to see how much of an impact um, what you did um, had on the, on the base um, and to be able to see the weather sort of up, and, up close and, in, and personal was, was really, really fascinating.